What's going on guys, Super Insane 18 here, and it is time to have the discussion about banlist predictions. So unless you've been living under a rock, you know that we are currently smack dad in the middle of a tier zero fire format. We have the Fire King Snake Eye deck as well as Pure Snake Eye, and there are a lot of people that are begging for those cards to be hit in some capacity. Now, personally, I think that it is way too early into those decks lifespans for them to just completely die, but I do think they will get a slap on the wrist. So let's go ahead, starting with what I think is going to be forbidden, all the way down to the unlimited and go over what I think we will see in the upcoming ban list. Now, just a disclaimer, we don't know when we are getting this ban list, but we are around that time, so it should maybe be around the end of this month to maybe the beginning or middle of next month if the trend continues as it is, especially because we are going into the WCQ format within a couple of months, so getting a new list around this time gives players the opportunity to playtest and figure out what they are going to be playing for those formats, so let's jump on in. So, starting things off with the first card that I can see being forbidden is going to have to be Dimension Shifter. Now, this is a card that a lot of people have been very upset about for a long time because against certain strategies, it is essentially a turn skip, being able to just floodgate on turn zero if your opponent goes first, especially now that we don't have anything like Gamma to kind of stop it, uh, with Gamma being limited to one Siphon Gear Gamma, if you're not sure what I'm talking about. This card has very little counters. You either need to open the one of in Called by the Grave, or you have to side deck in a copy of Dimensional Shifter as well as Cross Out Designator if you're not already maining it, and even then you run the risk of bricking on your own Dimension Shifter and not being able to call it off of the Cross Out Designator. This card is a macro Cosmos-like effect, just really, really strong, and it can only be played in certain decks, which is part of the problem. If this was just a generic card that could be played in everything without really kind of hindering you, it would be a little bit different. But that's why this card is so strong, because there are only a few decks that don't get hindered by it, and therefore you can just turn off almost every other deck in the format by using it. So this is a card that I think has been around for a long time. It got printed originally in the 2019 Megatons, if I'm remembering correctly, as a promo, and the only times that it has really been abusable are in degenerate formats where things like this happen and it just ends up being a turn skip. So even though I like the card because I'm a very big Fluanderies fan, I definitely understand why it is broken and needs to go. Now, the second card on the this list we're gonna have to talk about because I'm actually going to change my original prediction. Originally in this slot I had the gimmick puppet Nightmare, but yesterday or the day before, not really sure on the timeline, they revealed a ton of new gimmick puppet support. So that kind of lowers the likelihood of a card that is part of that archetype getting hit, because unfortunately yes, sometimes the ban list is used to sell upcoming product, and you don't want to hit a deck that is getting brand new support, even though gimmick puppet Nightmare is being abused in a strategy that isn't Gimmick Puppet. So what I think will actually happen now, we're going to go ahead and change that, is we are going to have the Albion, the, what is it, the brand, or whatever the new Albion is, I think it's the Sanctifier Dragon, I don't have it pulled up in front of me at the moment, but the one that is essentially the branded expulsion in the form of a monster that is untargetable. So I think that we will finally get a hit on the Sanctifier Dragon because it is what allows for the degeneracy of being able to essentially turn skip your opponent. Because again, if you go back to like the Gimmick Puppet Knight, Nightmare, you make the example of, well, then they're just going to start playing other turn skips like Jalgen or Ido or any of those other, I think there's Raw's Disciple, one of those cards, and it's very unlikely that Konami is going to hit four, five, even six cards when they could just ban the Sanctifier Dragon and be done with it. So while the original pick for this slot was the Gimmick Puppet, I definitely think that with the recent support and just overall logic, it has to be the Albion. Now, going back to Fluanderies, despite me being a very avid fan of the deck, I know when cards are broken, and one of the cards that absolutely needs to be banned is going to be Harpy's Featherstorm. This is a card that has very little counterplay, because we don't have cards like Red Reboot in the format. If your opponent is able to just flip this on you, it's pretty much game over. For the rest of the turn, all of your monster effects are negated, meaning that you can't play the game, essentially making it a pseudo turn skip. Now, there can be ways around this, albeit very unlikely, such as uh, kaijuing or removing your opponent's Wind Wing Beast before they have a chance to flip this, but if your opponent wants to, they can just flip this in your draw or standby phase before you ever have an opportunity to take an action that would remove those monsters. So that's what makes this card so broken, is that pretty much whatever you do, you're going to get your turn skipped, and I think that we just need to move away from a turn skip mentality in Yu-Gi-Oh! The point of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And all of these cards that 
don't really let you play just shouldn't be allowed. That's why Scythe got banned. That's why so many other cards in the past have gotten banned. So I think that it's time to just remove all the turn skips because if you haven't noticed already, turn skips are the cards that are primarily taking up this forbidden section on my picks. Uh, we've got the Shifter, we've got the Albion, now we have the Featherstorm. And spoiler alert, the next two are turn skips as well. So I think it's just time to get those out. Speaking of turn skips, this is a card that I'm surprised didn't get hit sooner, and that is going to be Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. Obviously, this card became a problem as soon as we got cards like Crimson Dragon into the game, because you are able to then cheat this card out, but honestly, this card has always been a problem. A couple of years ago, I don't know if you guys remember, but there were punk decks that were spamming this thing out. At the moment, now we have Centurion that can spam this thing out, and it's just really not fun to, again, play the game and be told that you are not allowed to play. Not really much else to say on this other than let's go ahead and ban it. And the final card on our forbidden list is going to be Beatrice the Eternal Lady. This is a card that for a long time people have wanted banned because being able to just send any card from your deck to the graveyard is already broken enough. But now with the addition of transaction rollback, this card is a turn skip as well because you can pair it with something like the Mayakashi Trap. I'm not gonna remember the name, it is a long name. But essentially that Mayakashi Trap in tandem with transaction rollback, both being in your grave is a turn skip, which of course Beatrice puts both in grave because it is a once per turn with two materials so you do it on your turn you do it on their turn and then with transaction rollback being a trap you banish it you turn skip your opponent and again it's just not interactive and not fun this one is a little bit less offensive because there are kind of more ways to counter it you can always go ahead and negate the beatrice or remove the cards from the graveyard before they use them so it's a little bit less broken than some of the other ones but again beatrice has been a contention point for quite some time since it is just able to foolish burial and any card, so I think that it's finally time to see Beatrice go. It went to one pretty much immediately when it came out, and it's been sticking at one for the last seven or eight years but it's time, let's go ahead and put Beatrice to rest. Moving on to the limited, there is actually one card I want to talk about coming back before we talk about the cards that will be hit, and that is going to be Magispector Unicorn Kirin. For those of you unaware, we did get a good handful of Magispector support in Phantom Nightmare, and not only was it Magispector support, but it was the first in-archetype support to be able to summon Kirin. The new cards allow you to summon a level six or lower wind spellcaster from your deck, which happens to match the Kirin stats. This is a big deal because since Kirin is a level 6 and the scales within the Magic Spectre archetype are 2 to 5, you were never able to actually consistently play Kirin in a Magic Spectre strategy, and the reason that this card got banned was because of other Pendulum strategies abusing it since it is essentially generic pendulum support. But now that pendulums are kind of on the fall and we don't really see many of them running around, I think that with the new Magispector support we got, it is the perfect time to release Kirin. I'm genuinely very surprised that they didn't do this on the last list in anticipation for the support, but now that we've got the support out and they see that it wasn't enough to really push Magispector up as much as they might have liked it to, I think that we'll see Kirin returning to one. Next up are the cards that are currently part of the format that we obviously need to see something done to, so first we are going to talk about Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon. Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon is a little bit of a weird one because if you are on a Fire King strategy, you're only playing one anyway, but if you're on a pure strategy, you are definitely playing two because a lot of the combos require you to run through both of them. Now, you might be thinking that it's a little bit of a pointless hit, but if you look at some of the data, despite Fire King having the overall higher representation, if you look at the pro players, uh, I know that a lot of people don't really like being called pro players, so the the quotes, but if you look at the big name players that we all know, a lot of them have shifted from the Fire King strategy to the pure Snake Eye strategy. Me personally, I think that pure Snake Eye is the better deck as well. I'm not a huge fan of the Fire King cards, but this could be something that can stunt the deck without outright killing it, and I think that that's really important. Because these cards are so new, Konami's not going to want to just completely destroy the deck just yet. They're going to want to give it a little bit of a slap on the wrist, and this is definitely one of the ways to do it. And in those same veins, I also think that we'll be seeing something like Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils limited to one as well, because it is just a consistency piece for the uh, deck. They're not going to hit Snake Eye Ash, because unfortunately Snake Eye Ash is the heart and soul of the deck. I'm not going to say they're not going to hit it, but I don't think they'll limit it, but it is the heart and soul of the deck. You hear a lot of people talking about how Snake Eye Ash is very similar to something like Airlifter. 
but I disagree. Rescue Ace had a lot of other plays without being able to normal summon the airlifter because the emergency plus any other name was still full combo, whereas in Snake Eye, you really kind of live and die by your ash, so I think it's much more likely to see something like Wanted getting limited. Originally, I was going to say we're going to see something like Dia Bellstar getting limited, but again, if you look at Fire King strategies, Fire King strategies are only playing one, whereas the pure Snake Eye strategies are playing Two, uh, two to three, and I think that that is the differing factor, not to mention that Wanted actually has a graveyard effect to get you additional resources as well. So it makes a lot more sense to put the Wanted to one than the Dia Bell Star because it's just a consistency piece. Now for the next three cards, we're going to throw them all up at the same time because they are all part of the same category, and that is going to be Anti-Spell Fragrance, Skill Drain, and Summon Limit. Now these cards are cards that for some reason Konami missed on the last ban list because they limited literally every other oppressive floodgate except for these. Now there have been a lot of claims over the years that anti-spell should be flat out banned, but given what Konami has done on the last list, I think that they want to see these oppressive floodgates just at once so that they are available but they are not as broken. Personally, I don't really like putting things like this at one because it kind of, if you guys have heard me talk about it in the past, it's something that I call Vanity Syndrome. Uh, back in the day of Dragon Rulers, Vanity's Emptiness was originally at three, and because it was at three, everybody main decked MST as a way to out it. But then once it went limited to one, the mentality kind of shifted of why am I going to main deck three MST for one vanities? That makes no sense. And then they would just get blown out by the vanities because the opponent would flip the one floodgate and then it was just over because they didn't have an out. And I think that that's kind of where floodgates still stand is the less of them are available, the less likely you are to prepare for them and the less prepared you are for them, the more broken they become. So I definitely think that we're going to see all of these cards being limited. Not that I necessarily agree with it, but based on previous lists, I just think that that's how it's going to go. And moving on to the semi-limited, there are a couple of cards that I can see being put here as, again, more of a slap on the wrist. Well, one is a slap on the wrist, one is kind of an apology, and we'll go over that when we get there. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the semi-limits. I think that putting a card to two doesn't really change anything. There are a handful of cards that I think deserve to be at two, such as Destiny Hero Malicious or Zodiac Rapier, even though Zodiac Rapier is at one. But the point being is cards that are able to summon themselves from the deck, not once per turn. I think that that is a perfect ratio for cards like that being at two. That way the effects are actually usable, but not necessarily breakable. So the first card that we're going to talk about in the semi limits is going to be Snake Eye Ash. Now, in the previous section, we talked about how I didn't think that they would hit Ash, and then I corrected myself that I don't think that they would limit it. I think that seeing Ash go to two is definitely feasible because we still have ways of searching it like Bonfire, but then we also still have a decent probability of opening it because, again, a lot of the combos for both the Fire King and the Pure Variants live and die by Ash. That is why we have cards like Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence that are so strong. So I think that putting this to any less than two is way too devastating of a hit for the deck this early in its lifespan, so it just makes sense to me that it would go to two. And the second card that we have being put to the semi-limits is actually going to be a card coming back, and that is Unchained Soul of Sharvara. With Soul of Sharvara getting limited, a lot of people just jumped ship and the deck essentially died. And I don't think that that was the intention of Konami, so I think that they'll probably want to bring it back just to kind of open up the format a little bit. Unchained is still playable, we saw that it had a regional win here in Las Vegas, so it's definitely not not the end of the world with Sharvara being at one, but I think that putting it up to two will get players more likely to play the deck again, because I know that it was a deck that a lot of players had a lot of interest in, and they just kind of jumped ship when it went to one. It's pretty similar to what they did with the Scareclaw, or not Scareclaw, uh, Scarecrow for Super Heavy Samurai, is they just immediately hit it to zero, everybody jumped ship, there hasn't been any Super Heavy Samurai decks making waves, and I think that it was just a little too soon to flat out kill the deck. So hopefully they bring it back to two. And to finish things up with the unlimits, we're gonna go a little bit quickly because the unlimits is probably the most boring section of the ban list because these are cards that were either banned, limited, or semi-limited previously and are coming back because of how lackluster the changes have been. And the first card I think is going to be Orcus Harp Horror. Now Orcus Harp Horror came back to one after years on the ban list and so many players were super excited. And while it has seen a very small level of success, taking a couple of regional top 
pops, it has not seen anything on a bigger scene. This deck is still something that has been hilariously power crept in recent years, so bringing back Harp to 3 just makes sense considering putting it to 1 did almost nothing for the strategy. Next up, we're going to be talking about Dino Wrestler Pankratops. Pankratops is another one of those cards that was on the list for a very long time, and once they brought it back, it was very lackluster. There are some people that were siding two of these in their side decks just because of how strong the removal is, and it is actually a very good counter to some of the other cards on this list, mainly things like Anti-Spell and the Summon Limit. Yes, you can also actually counter Skill Drain with it because it removes itself from the field as cost, meaning that Skill Drain is no longer able to negate it, so I think that this card is going to come back to 3 because of those two reasons, the sheer just usability that it has, as well as the fact that its release was relatively underwhelming. And in that same vein, we have Speedroid Terratop. This came to 2, and I still have not seen a single person summon it on me, so I think that it's just one of those cards that again was power crept. Being able to search for a card that summons itself is very not broken in this format, considering all of the other broken things that we have, so it just makes sense to release it back to three. And the final card in this section is going to be Snatch Deal. Now, this is a card that came back in, I think, 2015, was only legal for a single format before getting re-banned, but now that it's back, it is seeing no play. Now, it would have seen a lot more play if something like Pearly had still been a top meta contender, but unfortunately, with the hits that they received, there are still very few of those running around that are doing decent, but not enough to warrant playing this card. The reason that it's good against Pearly is because the effect to take is not an activated effect, and the Noir is only uh, unaffected by activated effects, so you'll be able to steal your opponent's Noir with this card, and I just think that that is part of the strength of it, but again, that's really its only strength. So the fact that nobody is playing it and how underwhelming its release was definitely makes me think that we can see it come back to three. And there you guys have it. That is going to be my ban list prediction video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any disagreeances, please be polite down below in the comments. Let me know if you think I missed anything, if there's anything about the list you would change. I'd really like to have some interaction in my comments again as long as it's nice and respectful so thank you guys so much for watching you know the deal if you liked it make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell like comment share with your friends and as always don't forget to check out the channel sponsored dueling guard using code insane 18 or my link in the description down below you can get five percent off your entire order thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next one